Now, as you know, the Victorian election on its way. Here's the reality. Andrews has to lose 18 seats. Now, I would love to think that there's 18 little silent revolutions we can't pay attention to, but most likely he will win this upcoming election, despite being a terrible Premier that I wouldn't vote for, you wouldn't vote for, and our next guest, Steve Price, wouldn't vote for either. He's the host of Australia Today. You can listen to it on the Listener app or listen to his show on Triple M Radio across the regional network every single weekday morning. But I thought, as a bloke who is well and truly across how it works inside the inner sanctums of Melbourne... I wanted to just put all of our personal feelings to one side, but ask Steve, how does this bloke do it? How does this bloke stay in front of what would kill any other politician? Well, he's got rid of anyone who was a critic of his, so he's cleaned his ministry out and lined that up now with fellow travellers in the socialist left. Uh, he's refused to deal with the mainstream media. Now, you know, the number one radio morning presenter in Melbourne is a bloke called Neil Mitchell. You know, Neil and I have had our moments, but Neil does a pretty good job. And Dan Andrews hadn't spoken to him for five years. Wow. Uh, and so he doesn't deal with the normal media cycle here. So just to quickly summarise for people what the hell's going on, you've got the Age newspaper, who you and I would describe as a left-wing leaning newspaper. It's hardly from the right. Uh, and they are now going after him because last week they had to front up they had a court injunction set against them because they wanted to publish a story that they'd had leaked to them about an IBAC inquiry into Dan Andrews over him giving a grant of $3.5 million to the Health Services Union. Now, uh, IBAC wants to in investigate it. They interview the Premier. And so when the age rings the Premier's office and said, we're going to run this, suddenly there is a court injunction against the story being run. So he was asked several times yesterday by a guy called Paul Sakal from The Age, did you or anyone in your office contact the Corruption Commission to get this story stopped from being run? He wouldn't answer the question. So that's the fourth time that there's been a corruption inquiry where the Premier's been asked to front. So that's the left-leaning age. Then the newspaper that I work for, Paul, and do a column on a Saturday, the Herald Sun and the Saturday Sunday Herald Sun, they revisited some of the things that have happened in Dan Andrews' past. Now, is that public interest? Well, hell yeah. Hmm. The bloke took three months off work in the middle of COVID when we had the biggest lockdowns in, in the world and when everyone in Victoria was losing their mind, he took three months off because he fell down a set of stairs and described it as, I was airborne. That's a direct quote. He did a bad injury to his back. No one likes to see that. So suddenly, after all that time, the Herald Sun's found the house and taken a picture of the stairs. They're two small steps out of a doorway. <laughs> now, yes, you can fall and do yourself an injury on two steps, but that's still public interest. Everyone in Melbourne who lost their Premier for three months would have gone, oh, hang on, how could you do that to yourself on two steps? And then they've gone back a bit further to an accident where his wife was driving a car and this young man was nearly killed he's decided to speak publicly for the first time. Is that not a genuine story that this kid speaks for the first time? And then late today, we see pictures of this car. Daniel Andrews has always described it as being T-boned. Well, the windscreen's caved in. I don't know how you T-bone a car and then end up on the front windscreen. So those pictures are now being published. I mean, it just goes on and on and on, and it frustrates the hell out of people in Victoria who just want to get on with their lives that this bloke is so slippery, he just survives everything. Well, and also, the opposition is caught, because I understand why people want them to be sort of flamethrowers against Daniel Andrews and his government and every decision that he's made. But the point is that, you know, with the greatest respect to everyone that we love in Victoria, it is a more left-leaning state. Politics is done ever so slightly differently. It ain't 1995 anymore, where the Jeff Kennett sort of, you know, crash or crash through way of doing things, which was the response, of course, to Kerner and Kane and they ended up naming Arena after Kane, um, was, of course, wanted. So, to me, I, I, I get that the Libs aren't going to go flamethrower, but also they've sort of thrown away the opportunity to say, vote for us and let's heal Victoria. Let's heal the health system, heal the schools, heal the businesses. Instead, they're trying to sort of outdo Labor and fight against Teals who may or may not have a good run, which means essentially when people at the Sky News People's Forum in a couple of weeks' time, they'll see Andrews at the top of his sort of yep. BS game and they'll see Matthew Guy kind of not really standing for much. 
And we'll see, of course, the Peter Credlin special that's going to air on Sky next week. I'll be fascinated to see that. But Matthew Guy, the poor guy, this is his second go at defeating Daniel Andrews. He's up against, how would I describe Daniel Andrews? He's the most canny, uh, conniving, power-hungry politician I've ever dealt with in any parliament anywhere in the country. And I dealt with the New South Wales right when I was in Sydney. You've dealt with them as well. <laughs> yeah. There's no one that comes near to this bloke. Not Julia Gillard, not Kevin Rudd, God bless him, not uh, anybody, Bob Carr, no one. This bloke is the, 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 the sneakiest, cleverest, I was going to use another S word, which I won't, but he, <laughs> he, he gets away with stuff that no one would get away with. You and I remember Barry O'Farrell had to step down as Premier of New South Wales because some bloke dropped a bottle of Grange Hermitage on his front step. Yeah. Um, Poor Gladys Berejiklian had a love affair with a bloke who she probably shouldn't have had a love affair with, and she stood down. This bloke's the subject of four corruption inquiries. And then we have Julia Bradley on, on Sky today reveals that he told the Indian community, according to leaks she got, that they were going to get a $10 million grant from the government when the election came around, and he wouldn't answer the question. He, he, he changed the question. Watch the vision of Julia's question. It was very succinct. And he said, oh, well, I gave $10 million to the Chinese community. We didn't ask you about the Chinese community. We asked you about the Indians <laughs> who are mates of yours who you gave money to. Yeah. I mean, He's also seriously, you can hear the frustration in my voice. The guy drives me nuts. The yeah. media need to understand that their job is when, the, when this bloke is wobbling is not to prop him up. Like, about that car accident, the Channel 7 state political reporter basically ran a bit of a, you know, a doubt job when they were re-reporting the story. This was a, what, a 15-year-old kid who's now found his voice as a bloke in his yes. mid-20s. This bloke has ever... I mean, it is... It, who cares what the dad said five years ago? Um... And if you and I were involved in any sort of similar traffic incident, well, I don't reckon there would have been nothing to see here. No, and, and look, when I see Media Watch last night say it's a non-story, uh. I work out that it is a story that people are interested and in, do want to know about. I mean, Paul Barry sanctimoniously sitting up there last night giving it to everyone over this, saying it's the worst case he's ever seen of, of, of taking on a government. I mean, seriously. I mean, I don't know where he... I mean, let's forget about him. But this, I don't think Andrews would, would survive in this way in Sydney. Yes. Now, why do I say that? Because the Sydney media, you um, and, you know, our old mate Hadley on GB and all those people, uh, they would rip him apart and this would not have been allowed to keep going. But he seems to have people, if they're not scared, they're, they're sort of... You know, you had to get you had to send Peter Credlin along to the media conference to get him over the lockdowns, for God's sake. So I, I just think Victoria, every Victorian I speak to when I'm in the street and someone says, oh, day, Steve, haven't seen you for a while, how are you? They say to me, how are we going to get rid of this bloke? 